Assalamu alaikum my friends and welcome to the city center of Marrakesh, the heart of the Moroccan kingdom. So today we're doing our what's going on in Morocco video. We're gonna get into some past, some present, some safety tips, some tips for traveling here in Morocco. It's one of the craziest countries I've been to. There's a lot going on here and we don't have any time to waste. Let's do it, yalla. So before we get into the what's going on section of this video, I wanna show you a little traditional Moroccan lunch. So we've got some lubia. These are the beans of Morocco. They're normally white beans cooked with, uh, you can see a lot of garlic, super beautiful. We've got a nice piece of Moroccan bread and we have a tagine or the clay pot dish of Morocco. Normally you've got some meat, potatoes, uh, some tomatoes here in Marrakesh. Super traditional, but you can find it everywhere in Morocco. The food here in Morocco is absolutely delicious. You really gotta eat at the local spots. Um, they have touristy restaurants. You're gonna pay basically two to three times for the exact same dish, so don't do that. So let's get into the content and let's try some tasty food. Whew. Okay, finished with the lunch. Tagine, always a good way to go. They really like the slow stewed items here in Morocco. I have to say that the Moroccan food is pretty good. It's not my favorite cuisine in the world. They use a lot of spices here, but they don't really, uh, they don't really go hard with them. Everything's very lightly spiced and very like uh, aromatic, so great. So we're starting off our video here, the what's going on video. We're gonna talk a little past, a little present, a little future. But first, I'm gonna introduce you to the heart of old Marrakesh. This is the Jama Alfina Square, I believe is what it's called. The Jama is this, this, this mosque here, very famous in the city. Marrakesh is a very aggressive place. This whole country is very aggressive. If you are here as a tourist and you don't look Arabic, you will probably be harassed with many people asking you to sell things, buy things, give people money. It's just kind of the vibe here. So um, if you do come to Morocco, be ready to see some very strange old world, new world things and everything in between. There's just so much going on here. I see a, I see a man with a monkey over here, or this, like, I don't know, I don't even know. This man with man, a man with a monkey pouring tea. Crazy. So as we're walking to this mosque here, let's get into a little bit of the history of Morocco. To sum it up, Morocco was occupied for a very long time by the local people who have been here. We call these people Berbers, but there are many different kinds of Berbers. There are the Berbers in the north, the Berbers in the central part, and the Berbers in the south. They all speak different languages, they all have different heritages. Um, they're all Islamic now, but uh, they have their own kind of traditional beliefs and practices. So those are like the original people, and you can still find these traditional people um, in smaller villages and also in, uh, in the cities, uh, selling kind of like Berber goods, Berber handicrafts and all that stuff. So that's kind of the starting point. The, since it, we're on the North Mediterranean coast, a lot of empires have been through this area as well. The Romans have been here, the Phoenicians have been here, the Ottomans tried to get in here. Um, this is kind of like a staging ground for the western part of the Mediterranean, and so it's really important for many empires to kind of control this Strait of Gibraltar. So someone had to control it from Spain, someone had to control it from Morocco, and it was incredibly an important, important thing. In the eighth century AD, the Arabs came and they forever changed this land from a North African and then also very European place to a place that was very influenced by the Middle East and Arabic culture. Changing their religion, of course, to Islam. This really shaped Morocco as a country and still has lasting effects to this very day as many of the influences in this country come from Islamic culture and Islamic practices, just like this big old mosque. Since the Arabs were here, there were many various, let's say, Arabic-influenced dynasties and caliphates that ruled over this land. Each one left its own impression and created a very interesting, very significant historical precedent for Morocco as this kingdom. They kept moving capitals. So Fez was an ancient capital, Meknes was an ancient capital, so you can find old ancient fortresses there. And then in the, I believe the 1600s, they moved the capital to Marrakesh to really facilitate a sort of trade route through Central Africa and through the 
the south of the Sahara. So this became the place of power, became the seat of all of the things that were happening via trade, which made Morocco a very, very rich and very advantageous land to control. Morocco, in many senses, was one of the main players in the Islamic Enlightenment, and there were many people traveling from many parts of these different caliphates of northern Africa to come to Morocco to study at their madrasas, to sell goods in their medinas. So they had so many influences from the south with the connection to the Malinese and Songhai dynasties of Central Africa to, to, the, to the northern African caliphates in, uh, in Egypt and in Tunisia and Algeria. And for a long time, Morocco and these places were brothers in arms, both securing the northern, I'm sorry, the southern Mediterranean coast, but also fighting off invaders. The interesting thing for me about Morocco is that for just a very short period of time, there was this colonial presence. So as Morocco headed into the 1800s, 1900s, there was of course the very notorious scramble for Africa. And the first people to come in here who were not of Arabic descent were the French. The French stayed here from 1912 until World War II. They took basically all of the country. And the interesting thing is that you can really still feel this French colonial, let's say, pressure that has been put here. People speak French. There's this French kind of air about it. The coffee culture is very French. It's not so Arabic. And it's weird because the French weren't here for that long which is surprising, surprising for me. Um, it seems like a lot of the other French colonies had a French presence until let's say the 1960s um, and were even incorporated into the French, let's say colonial empire even before that. But Morocco was a staging ground for all of this to go on. And unfortunately, well, unfortunately for the Moroccans, they, they, they were able to kind of have the French come here and have the French leave quite quickly. But the impression is still very, very felt. Um, strange. During the same time that the French were leaving their mark on Morocco, so were the Spanish. The Spanish took a little chunk of the north, where uh, the city of Tangier is, and a little chunk of the south, where, uh, which is now the Western Sahara region of Morocco. After World War II, the French came back, the Spanish came back, they reclaimed their colonies, and the French finally took off in 1956, in which the Kingdom of Morocco was officially established, uniting all of these places that had been part of colonies for quite a long period of time, as well as the Western Sahara region, which borders Mauritania to the south. So you can think that the Kingdom of Morocco had a lot to do to unite the people under one common flag, under one common banner. Merci beaucoup, no, it's okay. The Kingdom of Morocco had to unite these Spanish colonies, these French colonies, these Berber peoples, these Arab peoples who have lived in very different places under very different circumstances under one flag. And so that is exactly what the Moroccan kingdom was able to accomplish. And in such a short period of time, we're talking only like 70 years, 1956 until now, Morocco is one thing, one very, we can call it a uh, fragile thing, but currently it is banding together to do its best to ensure that the quality of life is going to improve for its people. Now, a tough topic that I do want to talk about that I'll talk about quickly and quietly is, that, well, especially while I'm walking around here in Marrakesh, is that Morocco has a king. Um, right now, they've had six Mohammeds. We're on Mohammed the sixth at the moment. His father, Mohammed V, passed away a couple of years back. And all throughout Morocco, there are palaces, there are businesses, there are large corporations. <laughs> there are things that are owned by the king and his entourage. So in a country with a high rate of poverty and a lot of people in desperate needs, although this is one of the, we can call it the most well-off countries in Africa, um, you're dealing with a monarchy that is one of the richest monarchies in the entire planet. Um, and they've accumulated so much wealth and power that they're really hard to displace in a place where the democracy is so fragile and has arguably a really big problem with, uh, we can call it the ethnic, uh, we can call it ethnic conflict in various areas. So 
many people argue that the king is actually a really a net positive because he holds the country together under one banner, but there's also high levels of corruption and bribery needed to run the state. And to do any sort of business here becomes quite challenging because if you're not liked by the, by the ruling class, it's not gonna happen. So first question we're answering, is Morocco safe? I would say Morocco is generally pretty safe. Um, it seems like a really good country for robbing people as there's lots of really confusing streets with really endless alleys and uh, the people can be sometimes very aggressive. But um, I haven't felt unsafe anywhere really that I've been so far, which is the, the good part about it. I noticed women often get harassed in the street and cat called. Um, so that's definitely something to be aware of before you go to Morocco. But it's a land of really friendly people, people who are really happy to help out. I'm a vlogger, which is uh, the, the good part about the country. There's always people to help you um, if you do need help. But you just have to have, you have to be aware. Maybe him, maybe him. So that's really the important part. So one thing I can say is that if you do come to Morocco, you need to have a thick skin and you need to be able to say no to things because while it is safe and while no one's gonna really hurt you, people are very, very aggressive. People will ask you for money, people will grab your arm. There's beggars really everywhere. Uh, actual beggars are not actual beggars, really hard to say. If you have any interaction with anybody, it's probably going to cost you. And if you don't look Arabic, as I said, you're probably gonna have people pestering you to walk you around the city to show you where you are. Just don't listen to these people. Sometimes they're, they're there to help you, but the majority of the time, they just want you to pay them $1 for them to do something for you. They want to take you to their shop and they want to, I don't know, show you their goods, which is great. There's a million shops here in Marrakesh or in any city, and they're probably not doing it out of the good spirit of just simply showing you their shop. So you gotta have thick skin and you gotta be prepared to say no and even be more rude than you would normally be, which is not a policy that I really enjoy, but they don't really give you an option. So if someone comes up to me, my, my new tactic is to just tell them that I'm Serbian because most people here don't speak Serbian. They speak really great languages here, it's French, Spanish, Italian, English. Um, so they can communicate with you in a lot of languages, but if you give them, uh, like let's say a false narrative, let's say you just say you're from, from Serbia, there's nothing they can really do. So they will leave you alone. They'll say welcome and they'll leave you alone. So that is my, uh, that is my traveler trick here if you do come to Morocco. So is Morocco cheap? I would say Morocco is pretty cheap. You can have lunch here for about a couple dollars. You can take a taxi. Taxis here are incredibly cheap in Morocco. And the overall service industry here is quite cheap. It can add up and you really need to be sure that they're charging you the price that it actually is. As I've had a couple times where people have tried to overcharge me, they just did it at lunch just now. They tried to charge me uh, basically a dollar more than it is, which of course wouldn't really make a difference, but if you're here every day, um, it's just not a nice feeling to know that you're not getting a fair price. So um, I would say it's quite cheap. The only thing that's not the super cheapest is drinking alcohol here because alcohol, it's not forbidden, but it's also not like really well celebrated. I'd say probably like a, a proportion of the population drinks here. It's not a high proportion. Um, so it's all kind of hush hush unless you go to kind of the you know, made for 20 year old people, kind of clubs and bars, the rich kids of Morocco kind of situation. So that's not cheap. You can pay like six or $7 for a cocktail, sometimes even $10. Um, and in a country where you can eat dinner for $4, I would argue that that's quite expensive. I wanted to make a comment about the people of Morocco from what I've seen in the South, the North, and in the middle of the country. The people here are fantastic. They are amazing and they are very challenging to be around. So what I will say about that is that, and I've talked to, I have plenty of Moroccan friends that I've, I've asked about this. The people of Morocco are great. You either have the best experience with someone, they invite you into their home, they share something with you, they're really generous and kind and helpful. Deeply, deeply good people. Better than most people I've ever met in any other country. But intermixed with these people are people who are scammers, who want nothing but money from you and see you as a walking wallet aggressively, much more aggressively than I've seen in other countries. 
They often don't treat you well. If you don't say something, they'll curse behind your back, which I just really don't appreciate as a, as a tourist. And because they have a big tourism industry from Europe, I'm kind of surprised this, this goes on. So um, just be wary of who you make friends with here. But if you do make friends and you really connect with, uh, with a local, it could be one of the best friends you've ever met, which is, which is I think why Morocco is so amazing. It's this land of contrast, this land of, of poverty and wealth, of happiness and sadness, of Arabic and European culture, of old world and new world, a place where you can see, you know, an old man wearing tr very traditional clothes just like that guy, and have a new guy wearing a tracksuit just like this guy, a place where you can see some fantastic spices, look at this display, and a place where you can really get as much culture as you can handle. There you go, this is my friend. Assalamu alaikum. Where are you from? Serbia. Ah, nice country. All right, thank you. It's a Jewish area. I know, I know. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, there's the experience, the full experience for you guys. On a final note, I want to talk about the international relations in Africa and the land disagreement that Morocco is currently having, because I think it's important. So internationally, Morocco is in a tough spot. In Europe, because there's a lot of Moroccan immigrants in Europe, I feel like the European countries don't necessarily like Morocco. Um, I notice when Moroccans try to travel to Europe, they make it very challenging to get a visa. And um, it's just because a lot of people illegally overstay their visas when they come to the EU. And I don't know, some can say a lot of crime comes from the Moroccans that move to Europe. It kind of is what it is. Um, it's not necessarily true of something I've talked about my Moroccan friends and it's just kind of a reality of just a reality so um, with regards to that oof, tripping there is that um, Algeria Morocco borders not friends there's a big dispute with a part of Morocco called Western Sahara now that is in the southern part of Morocco south of here by like let's say six hours driving and it's a huge chunk. It was the chunk that was controlled by the Spanish that got ceded to the Moroccan kingdom in 1956. The issue is, is that there are a, what the Moroccan government would say, a rebel group that are operating in Western Sahara, the Sahrawi, who are fighting to create their own country of Western Sahara. Morocco, of course, does not want that. It's a huge chunk of land. And uh, there's this sort of subversion tactic by the Algerians, which are supporting this rebellion. So Morocco and Algeria, although they are very, very similar in both language and history um, and all of that good stuff, they are really not friends at the moment. And there are even talks about some border conflicts coming up in the future. To the South Mauritania, um, while also being very similar in a lot of ways and being under the same colonial yoke, um, apparently they are not friends as well. So uh, I think it's just because of the ethnic makeup of these countries that people are banded under different flags for different reasons that it becomes extremely complicated um, in this uh, modern political climate. And uh, for some reason, the Kingdom of Morocco is holding it all together, but it doesn't make things easy and it doesn't make things comfortable for the people living here because things could obviously change in the future. What I love about Morocco is that they have beautiful trees with fruit everywhere you look. Beautiful palaces, beautiful architecture and so much more. So on a final note, before we finish the video, I do want to say that Morocco is one of the most interesting places I think I've ever been. It's so culturally diverse, so deeply rich in history, and different things going on. It's uncomfortable and comfortable, it's happy and sad, it's great, and it's kind of terrible at the same time. So uh, I can say you have to come to Morocco uh, it, to experience it in the real way. You should make some Moroccan friends, get out there see some stuff, do some things, eat some tagines, and everything in between. So thank you guys for watching. I hope the video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and I will happily answer that. Uh, the next country we're going to is Egypt. I really hope it's going to happen because right now the borders are closed and I'm locked in Morocco. So if that's not happening, then you'll see more Morocco videos, or you'll see some pyramids. I guess we're going to see. So uh, thank you so much, my friends. A big shokran bizaf for my Moroccan buddies, and I will see you in the next one. Salam alaikum from Marrakech.